I'll just go ahead and say it first. Gary, you could have continued that prayer for another hour or two. <laughs> Perfectly content with that. I also want to say I appreciate the fact that everybody decided that their family vacations were going to happen last Sunday, not this Sunday. So now I have a full house to preach to. I thank you for that. Um, this week, I'm sure a lot of you can tell, my father's not here. Uh, so I'm sure that may be a shock. Um, he's currently up in Montana, for those of you that didn't know. He's up at the pictographs. Looking at those, I'm glad he's finally getting some time off. Wish he would have taken me with him a little bit, but I'm getting over that slightly. Um, before I get into it too much, I'm going to list a few differences between me and my father. Uh, the first being that I'm not nearly as loud as that man is, nor will I ever be as loud as he is. Hence why the microphone is actually turned on for once. Second off, he focuses on one specific scripture. I'm not necessarily going to be doing that. And the third, and I know it'll be shocking, and I apologize if some of you faint. I have way more hair than he does. <laughs> you know? Anyways, so with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and pray us in. Go bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us all to gather together in your house and get into your word. I would ask that you would bless the reading of your word, take it to the hearts and minds that you would have it reach. And Lord, I pray you get it right. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. amen. And yes, I ripped off his prayer, too. <laughs> it's important. Now, like I said, I'm not going to be preaching on one specific part of the Bible. This is going to be more of a testimony. It's not necessarily my testimony so much as a shared testimony between me and a close friend of mine. Um, and it's basically on depression, so I apologize if it gets a little dark for a bit, but I promise it'll come back around. It just takes a bit. Um, so, with that in mind, the world that we live in today has a lot of things that tear us down and brings those around us down. Um, like I said, I'm going to be talking about depression, and it's hitting pretty hard and pretty fast in a lot of places. So unfortunately, it seems to be hitting pretty hard in the high school and college area. Um, with that in mind, a lot of my friends and family have suffered or are still suffering from that, but I'm going to list one out in specific. I'm not going to say his name, just out of respect for him. But I got his permission to tell this particular story, and what he has is he has depressive bipolar syndrome. And pretty much the elementary version of what that means is that some days he has good days, and some days he has bad days. Some days he has a little bit of both. Um, the medical version of that is that there are hormones in his brain that decide that today is not going to be a good day. Um, and he's been like this for a while, I'd say about four years of the six years that I've known him. And I've been trying to help him along the way. Um, it's not always easy, but you got to try. Now, the good part is he's a Christian, so the hard part was over. Um, I didn't have to do any convincing or consistent scripture reading to him to get him to there. He's always been one since we first met. And I'm going to talk on one particular day where he wasn't having such a good time. Um, before I go into detail about that, though, I should explain that his condition is a little abrupt. Uh, you should think of it like a light switch. One second the lights are on, the next second they're flipped off just as fast as they turned on. And that's kind of what it's like for me. He could have been having a fantastic day. He could have just gotten married, or pet a puppy, eaten a cake, pet 10 puppies. I like puppies, that's besides the point. But the story that he told me, he called me in the middle of the night, he was on his way to work, jamming out to his favorite playlist, as like he usually does. And suddenly his mind clicked off, and it took him to a really dark place. Um, it told him things that you hear in depression, people say all the time that he wasn't good enough, he didn't belong anywhere, and just an assortment of other things that kind of tore him down, and he was kind of losing the battle against it. Uh, he began to, sorry if I get emotional, this is lots of fun, um, he began to describe to me in great detail what it would be like to bend his vehicle around one of the hundreds of trees around him, the phone calls that he would make if he happened to somehow make it through it, how no one would show up at the hospital, and how no one would even care if he made happen to not make it. And like I said, I've known him for a while, so he's been like this before, and I've been trying to help him, and he's made it four years, so I'm making some sort of progress. But of all the times that he's woken me up in the middle of the night, which is a lot, um, probably why I don't get much sleep, uh, I've never really undermined what he's saying. It's always been important, it's always been the first thing that we talked about, because it's his life that we're talking about, it's not mine. I want to make sure that he stays as strong as he can. We talk about God, we read the Bible together, we pray together, I pray for him. And a lot of the times I 
us talking and what we read influences my teaching. As you guys know, I teach the Sunday school downstairs at 9.30 a.m., fourth grade and up. Uh, if you know anybody, nieces, nephews, brothers, sisters, kids, uh, bring them. I'll always take them out. But one example of how me and him talking has influenced those lessons is a few Sundays ago, I was teaching on the armor of God. And the reason that I taught that was because a few days prior to that, he wasn't having a very good day. And I used that particular part to kind of help bring him out of the hole that he was in. And some of you may know what the armor of God is. Uh, he didn't, because he actually doesn't like to read the Bible so much as listen to it. He's not a real avid reader, but he sure does like to listen and talk. Believe me, I know. Um, but I asked him, have you ever heard of the armor of God? Do you know what it does and how it helps people? And he said no. So of course I had to tell him immediately. So I went to Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, which says, Finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth, buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests, with this in mind, be alert, and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. And once I finished that, he kind of got what I meant, but I'm a person that likes to use imagery and metaphors, so I kind of drove the point home a little bit with history. Now I'm going to say, I was a history buff in school, I wasn't really into English or math. I apologize if that offends some of you, but I wasn't very good at them. History was what I was kind of good at. So I told him, okay, go, go with me in your mind real quick. We're going to go back to the medieval times. We're going to be in a medieval war. And you're a knight that's going to be going into this war. But before you go out and rush into the war, you're in a tent for preparation. That happened a lot. And you're going to be putting on what you're going to be wearing for the war. But let's just say that today you decide, okay, I'm going to wear like my, my shirt, my shorts, and my shoes. And then you just run headfirst out into the war. How far are you going to get? Well, like Christopher and Tati said at my Sunday school, Sunday it's at 9.30 a.m., uh, fourth grade and up. <laughs> see, see a theme. Anyways, like, like they said, you probably wouldn't get very far. Maybe 30 yards, uh, it would depend. But now let's, let's take a step back and say that now you're in that tent again, but this time you pick up a nice steel set of armor. It's shiny, protective. You've got a steel sword and shield. And then you go rushing out into the battle. Now how far are you going to get? Well, you probably wouldn't get pretty far. Christopher and Tatiana said that you would get all the way, but not, not quite, because you see, steel, steel will fail. Maybe not right away, maybe not for a long time, but steel does eventually fail. It, be it buckles, it bends, it breaks. So, you may make it far, but you won't make it all the way. Now let's say, that instead of that big shiny set of steel armor, you somehow got your hands on this impenetrable force of armor that couldn't be pierced, penetrated, a cannonball would bounce off like a bouncy ball which would probably be really funny to see someone should invest in that. And you've got that, and you go to, into this war. How far would you get? Well, you make it to the end, that's for sure, because nothing can stop you. Now, once I finished up that, he thought he saw where I was going, and I kind of turned it on him, which is always fun to do. And I told him, okay, now we're going to take this and put it into the real world. But instead of the war of the medieval times, they were in the real world that we live in. We're with the insecurities, the doubts, and all the sins in daily life that we go through. And instead of dealing with that with the no armor, you decide that, okay, well that's obviously not going to work in this situation. I'm going to put on the steel set of armor. Well, in this scenario, the steel set of armor is doing things your way. Yeah, it works. It may even get you pretty far. But you won't make it all the way just doing it like that. Because you see, you have to put on that impenetrable set of armor that gets you all the way, makes it all the way to the end. Now, I 
Being a pastor's son, I meet a lot of Christians. I know, shocking. You wouldn't think so, but I do. And I hear a lot of people in today's world say, okay, but I'm a Christian, right? But if I do things my way, and it's still for the greater good, it'll still please God. And unfortunately, that's not really how it works. You see, if you want to go all the way and you want to please God, you have to put on that impenetrable set of armor, which is true. But if you're putting on that armor, you can't bring the steel set with you got to drop it and leave it behind. So after that, he got a little better what I meant, but I wasn't happy because I'm stubborn. I like to drive my points in. So I went with another piece of history. Again, don't like math or English. So this time I went with a bit of Greek mythology. Now I'm going to say this before I get into it at all. I don't believe Greek mythology happened. I don't believe it could have. Maybe once on a blue moon 40,000 years ago on the summer solstice happened. No, it's a piece of fiction. That's how I view it. It's like, okay, The Walking Dead, same thing, right? I could stand up here and read from a Star Wars book. Did Star Wars happen? No, neither did Greek mythology. I found it very important that I needed to point that out. Anyways, so some of you who may like history, I'm going to point out there was a Greek king called Sisyphus. And Sisyphus, he was real smart, real witty, cunning, and he believed that he could outsmart all the gods. Notice the air quotes. Okay. He could believe that he could outsmart all the gods and had done it on multiple occasions. Well, he got so good at it that he decided, okay, I'm going to run from the hilltops and shout that I can outwit Zeus himself. If you know anything about Greek mythology, not something you want to do, okay? So he mysteriously, a few months later, passed away due to unknown circumstances. Probably a bolt of lightning was involved. But... He passed away and went to the underworld of the time. Again, notice the air quotes. And when he went to the underworld, he was told that he had to push a boulder up a hill. <coughs> it doesn't sound too bad, right? I mean, it was a big boulder. Imagine that half of the room has a boulder in it. That's the size of the boulder. Now imagine Tracy was told to push that boulder up a hill. Okay, so it would actually probably be pretty hard. Yes, I threw you in there. <laughs> but he, he was a strong guy, so he could actually push the boulder pretty far up the hill. And he was like, this shouldn't be too hard. And he gets up there, he gets about 10 feet away from the top, and the boulder rolls back down the hill. Turns out Zeus had enchanted that boulder. So every time it got just 10 feet away from the top, it would roll back down, no matter what he did to stop it. And I pointed that out because that's a lot like the life that we live in today. You see, we're all carrying around boulders, some are different sizes. Maybe you've got a golf ball. Maybe you've got Jupiter on your back. But we all have something that we're carrying. And I've seen quite often in high school being the scenario where someone is carrying around that golf ball and, they just, and they're pushing it up their hill. And they look over and decide that the person over there that's got Mars on their back, well, they, they clearly have it better than I do, so why don't I knock their boulder back down the hill? And you know, you never know what someone's carrying on their back unless they tell you. And like I said, we're all carrying our own boulder. And some days they're different, especially for my friend, where his changes almost every single day. So some days you've got a golf ball, some days you've got bigger. Maybe you're carrying his church on your back. And, you know, we all are pushing them up this hill. And even if you've got the golf ball or you've got Mars or whatever, when you get 10 feet away from the top, no matter what you do, it's going to roll back down. But that's because you're doing things your way. You see, Sisyphus tried to just brute strength his way up that hill. But you see, if you do things God's way, God lifts all the burdens of that boulder off of you. For his burden is light. And after we had finished discussing that and going on about it, we prayed for a long time for strength, healing, emotional comfort, the whole shebang. He's doing pretty good now. Um, I just texted him maybe 20 minutes ago. He's still here, so that's always good. And, in fact, he hasn't had what we call an episode in several days. And if you've known him for as long as I have, that's saying something. But even through all that, I'll never forget some of the things that he's told me, the experiences that we've shared. Um, he likes poetry, so he quotes poets quite often. It gets a little annoying after a while, but you get used to it. Um, a couple of the poets that he has quoted, he quotes them because he relates to what they're saying. Um, he knows exactly what they're describing and what it's like to go through it. He often quotes one where he can describe what it looks like when the sky is bending in moments before it's about to fall. 
He knows what it's like to wake up in the morning trying to convince his own shadow what, that he's worthy of following. But of all the hours that we've spent up at night talking over the past four years, he has continuously brought up one scripture, and it's his favorite scripture, so in turn it has turned into my favorite scripture because it's helped him. And that is 2 Timothy 1.7, which says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. And like I said, that scripture's helped him through a lot. Uh, I don't know if he would be here today if he didn't have that reinforcement behind him. But he's here today, so I'm not more too worried about it. Um, the main point I'm trying to get across is that there are thousands, maybe millions of people suffering from something like this. Maybe worse, maybe not as bad. And I would encourage every single person here that if you know someone or you have come across someone who is going through this, that you sit down and you talk with them. Talk about God, Scripture, all of it, because I promise it's all important. And it doesn't matter if you don't want to bother them or you think they're too busy or they need to handle this on their own. I promise they'll appreciate it if you just talk to them for just a few minutes, if that's all you can do. Let them know they're loved. Pray for them, maybe with them. If you don't know any good scriptures to help someone that's like this, there's one that I've always used for countless friends and family members that has always helped. And it's Deuteronomy 31.8 which says that the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. And I point that out because a lot of times what people fear is being alone. And knowing that there's a God there that will never leave you alone is something that gives them something to hold on to. And if it seems like you aren't making any progress, and it will, I promise. Again, four years, um, there were some weeks where I didn't think he'd make it through and it'll mean a lot to them that you're even trying in the first place. So next time you encounter someone who you feel like you, they need God's help, sit down and talk to them for just a few minutes, or a few hours, if it happens. And think about it. Maybe God puts you and that person together for a reason. Maybe you're meant to save their lives forever. Or maybe you're just meant to save it today.